okay so the the last simple operation which we need to see is uh, signal multiplication okay so if i have to draw a block diagram of a signal multiplication it will look like something like this this is multiplication sign okay so one signal will be f or this is actually a multiplier x1 will be fed from this side x2 will be given to this from this side and the output uh, will be x1 of t and x2 of t okay this is multiplication okay so how it will look like suppose i have two signals first signal is suppose uh, let me just go to the next page so that it will be easier for me to draw so this is say uh, one signal uh, <coughs> this is one amplitude one and this is amplitude less amplitude two it will uh, look like something like this okay so this is one two second and this is three second i hope i'm audible perfectly audible yes yes sir okay. yes sir yes sir okay so i'm just first i am drawing the uh, signal it will look like till uh, 1 second it will be ramp okay with slope 2 that you know after that it will be simple uh, <coughs> uh it will remain at uh, amplitude 2 for 1 second then it will drop to say one amplitude one then it will remain one for one second and it will drop to zero so this is my signal okay the second signal looks like something like this this is say 0.5 one 1.5 okay so this is x1 of t and this is x2 of t okay so let me have i had just uh, exact time period i had taken so that i can do the multiplication this is 2 this is 3 okay for 1 uh, second it remains at 1 then it falls to 0.5 amplitude then it remains for 1 second at that time then it jumps to 1.5 and it remains at 1.5 for 1 second and it jumps to 0 okay what about this this is at this the amplitude is 0 okay so this is x of 2 how i can do the multiplication is second by second i can multiply right so let me just change the color okay so this is one second right so here you can see as this is amplitude 1 so if i multiply 1 with this one it is going to remain it is going to follow x1 say this is 0.5 1 one point five and this is two okay so for one second it is going to follow this signal so it is going to remain like this okay now here you can see that it is amplitude two whereas it is amplitude point five so two into point five it is one right so for every a uh, fraction of second or fraction of time it is for this period it is going to be one okay but i cannot leave this abruptly like this so i need to connect this okay so i connected like this it is like this and then here 
okay now for after 2 this is amplitude 1.5 this is amplitude 1 so it is going to be 1.5 right so this is going to be jump over here and it is going to remain like this so i will draw like this and then both are going to fall to zero okay so this is my x1 t into x2 t okay so each and every point is multiplied and i am going to get this this is simple multiplication i hope this is clear to you any question with this sir can you please repeat the last graph last part a uh, two okay last graph or you want a part last part multiplication one yes okay let me just erase all this so this is one okay two second and three second okay so for one second it is remaining one right so from zero second to one second i'm going to multiply one with this ramp right this ramp has a slope of two yes sir okay. anything multiplied with one is going to remain as it is do you agree with me yes okay and therefore i am going to get this slope over here till 1 am i correct now from 1 second to se two second okay for this period <coughs> let me just have just give me a bit okay now for this time period how i should multiply it is going to be it is going to be multiplied by 0.5 right for from 1 to 2 second 0.5 yes this is 0.5 am i correct multiplied with 2 for entire from 1 to 2 second it is going to remain 2 so it is multiplied by this and this is from 1 to 2 it is it is 0 0.5 okay so 0 0.5 multiplied by 5 uh, sorry 0 0.5 multiplied by 2 it is going to remain as what is the value 1 1 okay so in this period from 1 to 2 it is going to remain as 1 okay but i cannot leave this hanging so i am going to because this is continuous one and therefore i am going to connect this over here i hope i am clear yes sir. okay now i came to this from now from 2 to 3 from 2 second to 3 second what is the value this 1.5 multiplied by 1 right and that is going to be equal to 1.5 right so from 2 uh, second to 3 second it is going to be it is going to be 1.5 right and i cannot leave this hanging so i will connect this okay and both are falling to zero right here also it is falling to zero he, this signal is also falling to zero at 3 and therefore its multiplication at 3 is going to be zero therefore i have to make it zero over here at three it is zero at zero it is zero at one to two it is going to be a ramp of this one I hope yes I, I hope i'm clear okay so this yes. point to point multiplication and therefore what i return was x1 t into i had used here dot so that this is point to point multiplication right and x2 of t i hope you have studied dot multiplication and cross multiplication in your uh, this one math, uh, ma uh, mathematics right the dot represent 
each point is multiplied with corresponding point that I did over here and therefore this is dot I hope I'm clear now yes okay uh, I is anyone is having any further question okay now <coughs> let's uh, enter to the complex signal in mathematics actually you have seen uh, s transform right uh, or s uh, or a complex signal you might have seen uh, complex signal is a representation of signal in so we know this signal we are very familiar with this uh, plotting a signal like this right but when we go to the laplace domain it looks like this okay this is real axis and this is imaginary axis right and this like this uh, if I draw a um, vector like this it shows a position of a signal at particular time okay and this is theta right theta goes from 0 to infinity am I right it goes from 0 to infinity but it repeats this motion for every 2 pi am I right so this 360 rotation is actually a 2 pi am I clear uh, you have seen this in mathematics am I right yes no yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. now how I replace represent a complex signal that is our this might be actually the revision for you uh, just I'm repeating I might be repeating for you but we have to see how we write a complex signal x of t is equal to e raised to st like this we repre uh, represent the complex signal where s is equal to sigma plus j omega am I right here I need to mention one thing is that whenever I am writing small omega it is the uh, linear frequency and which is represented in uh, Hertz or cycle per second okay and whenever I am representing capital Omega it is the uh, circular frequency and which is, which is uh, represented in as a radian per second I hope th you have s uh, studied this in your mathematics right so let me just write again what we had uh, written that is x of t is equal to e raised to st and s is equal to sigma plus uh, this can be a uh, understand this this is uh, plus or minus j omega okay uh, we are not restricting with only with the plus so for simplicity i am writing for the plus and but there can be a negative also okay uh, this if i replace this s over here with this equation uh, what i am going to get is that x of t is equal to e raised to sigma plus j omega right i can separate e like this e raised to s and this is t over here sigma t plus e raised to j omega t right and if i uh, apply the euler's identity to this so what can i get for uh, so this is not plus okay uh, i made a mistake over here let me just correct it this is into okay 
and if I'll apply the Euler's identity over here, I can write this as why? Because there is a J. Why I'm not applying to this? Because this is the real part and this is the imaginary part. Okay, or it has an imaginary component and this do not have the imaginary component. So I'm not applying the Euler's identity to this. I can apply only to this because there is a e raised to j uh, something okay and therefore e raised to j <coughs> one second i made a mistake over here okay just let me scratch this let me write it again e raised to st and s is going to be sigma plus or minus capital omega j omega okay so i hope you understood what where i ma made the mistake therefore i just cross this and i am writing again okay and therefore x of t is equal to e raised to sigma plus j omega t and this is equal to e raised to sigma t into e raised to this is plus or minus okay j j omega t okay so to this i am applying euler's identity did i can apply only euler's identity to this uh, because of presence of the j over here okay and therefore e raised to j omega t is going to be cos of omega t plus j sin omega t and this is plus or minus omega t if i put this in this equation what i'm going to get is x of t equal to e raised to omega t as it is right so this is going to be as it is in bracket i'm going to get cos of omega t obviously again plus or minus j sin omega t okay so this is going to be omega t let me write it <sighs> okay so like this now what we are going to do is that how this equation we can plot we need to plot this so that we can visualize it right so we had uh, seen uh, three types of uh, uh, signal representation first is equation that we are written over here so, uh, second one was tabular this we are not going to do and third one was graph so we need to see how this equation look like right so that we are going to plot this graph and in that we have some cases okay cases related to sigma and omega okay so first case is suppose sigma is equal to 0 and omega is equal to 0 so my equation x of t I had instead of this okay this was uh, putting Euler's identity and all this let me take this equation this equation okay so it is equal to e raised to sigma plus j omega t right so here uh, if i'll solve this e raised to sigma into e raised to j omega t right so if i put this is equal to 0 and this is equal to 0 let me write this i guess you have studied this this might be repetition for you but we need to see over here so sigma and omega if i put a 0 how it will look like is right this entire term is going to be 0 and this is also going to be 0 so e raised to 0 into e raised to 0 and therefore it is 1 into 1 and therefore it is going to be one and how this signal will look like is like this okay so from 
infinity minus infinity to infinity it is going to be 1 this is ampere proof and this is called as a DC signal right so this entire signal is a DC signal because it has the amplitude of 1 I hope it is clear if yes please uh, uh, I will request you to raise your hand if not uh, you can ask me to repeat this again anyone who are not understood uh, you can frankly uh, unmute yourself and you can ask me anyone only 33 people understood what about others not even half students So only 43 others are if I am not writing doing something else or sleeping okay fine I am just lowering all the hands thank you everyone okay so this is the first case now here uh, understand this what exactly it means is that it's this is representing the amplitude that is also zero and this is representing the frequency if frequency is zero you understand this there is no frequency and therefore this is a DC signal right if there is no frequency it is going to be zero right it is a DC signal that is actually we can uh, observe over here right the frequency is zero the frequency of DC signal is going to be zero and therefore it is like this right and this term e raised to uh, sigma right this is going to be uh, e raised to sigma is going to give us the amplitude and that is going to be uh, 1 right because sigma is 0 and therefore it is at 1 second condition say if omega is equal to 0 and uh, only omega is 0 and therefore uh, s is equal to sigma plus j omega uh, oh, again and again I am making same mistake so sorry omega ok this is this equation is going to be just a sigma ok and depending upon how sigma is there are two cases I will write side by side ok in one case if sigma is less than 0 and if sigma is greater than 0 in both cases understand this if uh, omega is 0 that means uh, x of t is equal to e raised to sigma t right e raised to sigma t and here if the value of sigma is less than 0 right so how it is going to look like it is going to be looking like this ok understand that this is not going to be uh, 0 uh, right at finite time it is going to be 0 at infinite time right so this is a decaying signal right and this is x of t and this is amplitude and this is time okay and if sigma is greater than 0 it is going to look like this right this is exponential signal right this is amplitude and this is time So in this case when omega is 0 we have two cases understand this omega is 0 that is frequency is 0 so this is not going to cross 0 right we know this signal right this is sine wave how we define the frequency of sine waves right so how many times it is crossing from 
negative to positive in one second that is our frequency but here you can see that it is not cro it will not cross this uh, x axis right it will not cross x axis to cross if it will cross x axis then only we can have the frequency and therefore frequency is zero for this okay so it is constantly increasing dc signal or exponentially increasing this uh, dc signal this is exponentially decreasing dc signal i hope i am clear okay the third case suppose sigma is equal to 0 at that time s is going to be plus or minus j omega we will take uh, uh, oh, again i made a mistake s is equal to plus or minus j omega okay and this uh, is, uh, depending upon the sign actually uh, it is going to be plus or minus j omega t right and it is nothing but the sine wave something like this not only in the positive direction it is going to get extended into the negative direction also like this okay something like this so this is sinusoidal okay this is sinusoidal in the second case if so this is the last case if sigma is not equal to 0 and omega is also not equal to 0 but there are two cases right one is when sigma is less than 0 and in another case sigma is greater than 0 okay so what will happen decay and exponential right for sigma is less than 0 it is decay and if sigma is greater than 0 it is exponential but it will have the sin comp uh, sinusoidal component to it and therefore it will look like something like this okay and for exponential it will have a sinusoidal component and it will look like something like this but it will be exponential so if i take the envelope of this okay so it is exponential if i take the envelope of this it is decay right so these are the few cases of the uh, complex signal i hope i am clear uh, if there is any question please let me know otherwise if you are understood please raise your hand okay i guess i'm uh, might be teaching very s easy thing so you might be understanding it okay okay a if anyone is having any question you can unmute yourself you can ask or you can put a message in the chat box okay i'm going to lower all hands thank you now next part is classification of signal how we actually classify the signal okay first one first uh, way of classifying signal is that either a signal will be deterministic or it can be random okay if when a signal actually if i can write a uh, equation for a signal right mathematical equation for a signal then it is called as deterministic signal right if i can represent a 
a signal in the mathematical uh, equation it is called as deterministic signal right why it is called as deterministic signal if i have mathematical uh, equation for example sin of say uh, sin of t okay or sin of theta i will instead of that i will write sin of theta if i have this okay this is only a equation of a signal right so we'll write in very good format x of theta is equal to sin of theta right so only with this equation i can predict what is the value of this x of theta uh, or a signal at theta is equal to 0 or theta is equal to pi by 2 or theta is equal to pi by 4 or theta is equal to pi or any other value uh, right so for any value of theta only with help of this equation i can write the give the exact value of signal right how it will look like this signal will look like right and a deterministic signal is uh, defined as a signal whose uh, instantaneous value can be accurately predicted by a mathematical equation a signal whose instantaneous value can be accurately predicted by a mathematical equation is called as a deterministic so we can determine a signal is deterministic we can determine its value at any instant right any instant it might be theta is equal to 0 or theta is equal to f uh, pi by 4 or theta is equal to uh, pi or theta is equal to pi by 2 or anything any value we can determine by using the mathematical equation okay understand this mathematical equation can be lengthy or very short but with help of mathematical equation we can determine the instantaneous accurately determine or accurately predict the value of that equation then what is a random signal random signal is a signal characterized by uncertainty before its actual occurrence unless and until that signal occurs we cannot tell what is the value of that signal right and that means we cannot write a mathematical equation for that for example a noise okay so there is no mathematical pattern in this it is taking any random value and until and unless i come to this point or this uh, value occurs i cannot predict that value and therefore this is called as a random signal right second classification and it is very important classification that is periodic and a periodic signal okay let me give a definition first now first uh, we have two types of signal one is uh, continuous time let me write here continuous time and discrete time first i will write for the continuous time then i will write for discrete time a continuous time signal x of t yes abhishek uh, any question no sir by mistake i okay, okay. clicked no, on no issue abhishek no issue okay so a continuous time signal is uh, said to be periodic 
if it satisfies the condition x of t is equal to x of t plus capital T. Okay, if this is getting satisfied, then it is called as periodic signal. Okay, for example, if we had a, you know we are actually familiar with this. Okay, so after two pi, the signal is been repeated, right? This sine wave is been repeated, and therefore a uh, sine wave is called as periodic. This we know, right? Uh, we have uh, actually written this again and again. Okay, so suppose this is my signal. This is zero. Say after t time or t interval, this is going to repeat again. This is again going to repeat after t. That means it is two t, right? And before this also, it should repeat. Right? This is minus t. Over here also. It is minus two t. If this is repeating, this is called as a periodic signal, right? And this is for continuous time. What about discrete time? Right? For a discrete time signal, x of n is said to be periodic. if it satisfies the condition x of n understand this oh so sorry i am writing on the same page someone should have told me right okay a discrete time signal x of n is said to be periodic if it satisfies the condition x of n is equal to x of n plus capital n understand this for uh, dt signal discrete time signal instead of t we use n why we are discuss this right and this is for all n okay suppose a signal is looking like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay then it will again repeat 1 2 1 3 so this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 again 1 2 1 3 9 10 11 12 oh oh sorry 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 and this is 11 this is n again in the negative also it is going to be same so it is going to be minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 and so on it is going to be like this so what is happening this part is repeating again and again right and this is for ct right here we are going to talk about t or uh, okay or it can be n but we are going to take continuous time because it is easier for us to have the mathematical operations okay so we need to determine how the t will look like okay let me just check the time Yes, in five minutes I will explain, and uh, I was supposed to have. Let me take attendance first, otherwise I will miss the attendance. 